Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange. Today I'm here to do another round of recent reads talking about two horror books that I have just read and really enjoyed. So I don't have a lot of time here with nap time getting shorter and shorter by the minute. All that being said, let's get started. First, I wanna talk about Autumn Crow by Cameron Chaney. This is a collection of short stories that I received a digital copy from the author. I have since gone on to purchase a physical copy, but it's still on its way from Amazon as I'm filming this. If you don't know, Cameron Chaney is, of course, a horror booktuber here online, and I mention that because we do run in similar social circles, and I do consider him to be a bit of a booktube friend, and with that does come the recognition that I am probably predetermined to like this book because I already like him as a person, but I hope it goes without saying that while I do have those biases going into the book, my reading preferences and experiences are very much my own, and I will always be honest with you with my reviews. All that being said, let's talk about the actual book. So this book is set in Autumn Crow, which is a fictional town in Ohio that is supposedly the spookiest place in the world. I like that this book had the theme because it made the stories feel cohesive and linked together without making them feel too repetitive. There was a good variety within the collection. Some of the stories are what I describe as fun horror. They were a little more humorous, a little more fun, and kind of played into more of the classic horror tropes. And then there were other stories that were much more emotional, had a lot of heart, and depth to them and I just found the balance between the two really enjoyable and just made the collection a lot of fun. As you would expect from the spookiest town in the world, they really get into the Halloween spirit and so a lot of these stories do take place on October 31st and involve pumpkins and trick-or-treating and all of that good stuff. So this is a great collection to pick up around Halloween and is definitely one that I can see myself rereading every Halloween in the future. However, the stories are not so Halloween-y that they aren't able to be enjoyed after the holidays. So even if it's later in the winter, whenever you're thinking about picking this up, you can still very much enjoy it. You don't have to wait until October to pick this one up, which is really nice because again, it has a Halloween feel, but it's not so over the top that it almost supersedes the rest of the stories. Some of the stories do play into the holiday while other ones are not very related to it at all. With these stories, I found that some of them felt quite family friendly. I happened to be reading several of them aloud to my infant son who, yes, wasn't really aware of what was going on, but that experience gave me insight into the future and I can definitely see myself rereading some of these stories to him when he is older and able to actually appreciate what is going on. However, again, with some of the more serious stories, I think that they definitely will appeal more to an adult audience and very much plays into themes of grief and love and family ties and our inner demons and there's definitely a lot of depth to these stories. I will say that Cameron Chaney has a very straightforward writing style. It's very casual in tone with a lot of dialogue and was very easy to get into. I will say of the eight short stories, there were four of them that I really connected with. I say in pretty much every short story review that I liked some of the stories more than others. There were no stories in the collection that I actually disliked. However, I'll admit that of the stories, four of them were somewhat forgettable for me and I really didn't have a lasting impression. I would have to reread them to even tell you what they were about. But the other four definitely stood out to me and are well worth reading the entire collection to experience those stories again, which I plan to reread in the future. All that being said, I would encourage you to check out my written review in this case because I do make references to the individual stories that I personally enjoyed so you can compare your reading experience to mine as you're reading through the collection. I'll say that I really like the first story that was very much a man talking about his life and love with his wife that has now passed away. And that story reminded me of Stirring the Sheets by Chad Lutsky, which is one of my all time favorite novellas. So very high praise. I definitely could see threads of that melancholy horror in that piece. And I also really enjoyed the final piece in the collection, There Are Monsters Here, which of course was previously published as a standalone story and I had read before, but rereading it, I honestly appreciated it even more. It really plays with the idea that we all have have monsters and those monsters can be our metaphorical demons that we struggle with in life or they may be more the horror kind of monsters that are a little bit more real and I loved how we played between those lines these stories are very emotional there is a lot of depth 
and I just thought they were really good stories to consume, to think about. And again, if you want to know more of my thoughts, do check out my written review. So I would definitely recommend this collection to other people that enjoy horror short stories, as well as those that don't necessarily read a lot of horror, but are just looking for some spooky stories to read. None of them were overtly scary to me, but instead they were more thoughtful, more that subtle horror. And again, some of the stories were more fun. There definitely was some really humorous moments in these stories. I did find myself laughing out loud at several moments, which is really enjoyable. And I would absolutely recommend this collection. So I gave it a solid four stars. And those are my thoughts on Autumn Crow. Now I want to talk about The Pale White by Chad Lutsky. I received a copy of this from Crystal Lake Publishing. And this is a novella that is about three young women that are forced into sex trafficking. They are forced into this situation. And at the beginning of the book, they get the opportunity to break out. And this is their story of survival and what they need to do to move on and move past the situation. And this is my third time reading Chad Lutsky, and I'm happy to say that I can now feel confident to call him one of my new favorite authors. All of the books that I've read by him have either been four or five stars, and this is another well-deserved four stars from me. Given the subject matter that I just described, it should go without saying that this book comes with huge content warnings. So if you are someone who is uncomfortable with all of the violence and abuse that comes along with sex trafficking, this book may not be for you. But if you are someone who is comfortable to take on that difficult subject matter, I highly recommend this one. I enjoy this one quite a bit, despite the fact that it was a very difficult read. I should mention that while I described this as about three women, one of the people in this book is actually only a nine-year-old girl, and it was really hard to read her parts because, of course, such terrible things have happened to her. But at the same time, that young girl really made this story. So what Chad Lusky does so well in all of his books, this one included, is write these amazing, well-rounded characters. I was immediately attached and drawn to all three perspectives of these young women, especially the youngest one. But of these characters, I felt like they were real people. And Chad Lusky just does such a good job of creating this emotional depth around them. And I will encourage anyone who criticizes when male writers write about female female characters and say that they don't do it well, they should pick up this book because without a doubt, had I not known the author's gender, I would have believed them to be female because I think he really created an authentic female perspective in the story and I completely bought it. This book was just so harrowing, so heartbreaking. And that's the other thing that Chad Lutsky does so well in all of his stories is just create this emotional connection to the reader. And I've said before that I I don't tend to be a very emotionally charged reader, but Chad Lutsky is quickly making me take that back because once again, he is really pulling on my heartstrings. While I'm putting this book in a horror video, I will say that it doesn't read like traditional horror. In a lot of ways, I would better describe this book as a dark contemporary story, but there's a reason that horror readers are drawn to it. This is very much a coming of age story, but I want to mention that because I think anyone who categorizes Chad Lutsky as solely a horror author is doing a disservice to him and his potential audience because I really think that he could be read much more widely from people that again aren't necessarily horror readers but just want a really good story with really good characters. That is the reason to pick up Chad Lutsky and no matter what he writes there is so much depth to his stories, so much heart and you really just need to see it for yourself. He is such a skilled writer and I adored every little page of this short book because again it's only 100 pages long but it clearly left such a big impression on me. So needless to say I absolutely recommend this one to anyone who can handle the content that is in here. This is a beautiful and heartbreaking story of three women that are forced to come of age perhaps too soon and what happens to them after these horrific events. So those are my quick reviews of Autumn Crow and The Pale White, both of which I absolutely recommend. I would love to hear if you've already read either of these books or are planning to, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.